Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I'm going to be using the doll configuration language to generate some Terraform code. Now that might sound like a lot of different pieces of technology, but it's really pretty straightforward, at least doll is. Um, basically doll is, and I think the authors describe it well when they say, it's, you can think of it as being JSON plus functions plus types plus imports. Um, it's basically a data language with functions and a couple different ways to share code and also type safety. So one very interesting feature of DAL is that it's not Turing complete, which basically means if you write a DAL program and it's correctly typed, it will terminate, um, which is kind of a cool feature for a configuration language. It's kind of a guarantee that you really want when you're generating config files, for example. So I'm going to be using DAL to generate Terraform code. If you're not familiar with Terraform code, a brief overview is um, here's an example of some Terraform code. Basically, it's a syntax and a programming language. It's kind of a configuration language, but it's got a lot more to it than that. It does more than just configure things. But basically, in Terraform, you describe different kind of resources and data and providers and things that you want to provision somewhere. That's the typical use case. I'm sure people use it for other things as well because it's pretty extendable. But for, here's an example. Um, you, you pretty much go into a specific domain and you use it to build stuff out in that domain, typically. So in this example, the domain is AWS Lambda Functions, um, or AWS. So basically here what I'm doing is I'm archiving a file, and then I'm taking that archive and producing an AWS Lambda function. This will actually deploy the code, um, make sure that your configuration is correct to some degree, make sure that your environment's correct, all that stuff. So you might ask, why would I want to use doll to do this? The reason I think that I want to do it is because basically this Terraform code isn't very dry. It ends up being a lot of repetition. Like if I wanted another function, it would be all this stuff over again with something subtly changed in it. Um, maybe the name of it, whatever, goodbye. Um, Maybe a couple different changes, but anyways, there's lots of boilerplate here. And then if I had multiple functions, something that would be painful about that would be there's no way to kind of meta program on top of that. And what do I mean by meta program? I mean, there's not really a nice way for me to write, uh, for example, if I want to output, <clears throat> I could say output function names. Maybe I want to get a list of all the function names to build a dashboard or do something else. Basically, in Terraform, I'd have to relist all of my Lambda functions. Hello, dot function name. And of course, just having you know multiple places that you have to specify the same thing is a place where you're introducing potential error. You could forget to do it. Um, you could do it wrongly. You could actually say something other than function name. Um, it's just there's no way to know. Maybe this is in a different file somewhere, and some new um, contributor to this code, they won't know that they have to go update this other special file. So with doll, I think I can make it so that I don't have to repeat myself um, so much, at least. So over here in this terminal, I've got two sides. Uh, I've got a split here. On the left, I have tf.doll. On the right, I'm going to run this command. Watch for a quarter of a second with color output, doll, and then my file. And basically running this command will kind of give me for free um, an IDE. Every quarter of a second, it's just going to be rerunning the doll code and outputting some stuff uh, What the compilation, if that's even the right word, is, the result is. So to start out, let's just output a multi-line string, which is done with double, double, uh, double single quotes. Oh, and something else I should mention, another reason I'm doing this is really just to learn doll better. Um, and the first thing I want to do is I just want to pretend that I'm outputting this exactly. So I'm just going to copy that right in. And now it's complaining because AWS CloudFront distribution is being interpolated. Um, so basically, in Terraform, this dollar sign curly brace syntax is string interpolation, and it just so happens that that's also string interpolation in doll. So I don't think I want to do that. Um, for now, I'm probably just going to remove the dollar sign and make it interpolate. All right, so far so good. We're just kind of outputting a big old text value here. Um, so maybe what I can do next is I can name this. You're allowed to use let. 
So I can say let uh, tf lambda, so terraform lambda equal this text in tf lambda. So I'm basically just giving that block of text a name and then I'm outputting it directly. That's pretty nice. Now, let's go ahead and figure out how we actually wanna parameterize this. So I mentioned earlier that I might wanna change the function's name. In fact, you have to change the function's name in AWS Lambda, you can't have functions with the same name. So I'm going to make it a function, which you can do by using backslash parentheses and then an arrow character. And these parens just take your arguments and their types. So I'm gonna take in a name, which is gonna be some kind of text. And now notice the actual output over here didn't break. It just shows me the function and it actually shows me the function's body, which is kind of cool because, I mean, not a lot of languages can do that. They don't really necessarily, they're not really able to safely resolve the body without evaluating the function. So basically what I wanna do next is I want to replace um, hello with whatever name this thing's been parameterized with. Okay. And then why don't we pass down hello here and the output is exactly what we had. So we already have basically done what we already had, but it's already so much more robust than what we had because for example, I can take this and now I can just say goodbye and I broke something. Oh, I've got to, I've got to actually interpolate these values. Um, these are calls, so let me interpolate those. And now I've got two functions. And really the only thing that I had to repeat was this little section of code here. So that's really cool. Um, so next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill in these environment variables because that is something I frequently change in these function definitions. So I'm actually gonna use types for this. So I'm gonna say let mvar equal. So this is gonna be a new type. So you have to say that that's a type and the type is going to have a key, which is going to be a string or text and a value, which is also gonna be a text. Oh, and you know what? I wanna keep this lowercase. All right, and everything's still compiling, which is really nice. Um, it's kind of like having an IDE with errors in it. And to be honest, the doll output's pretty nice. Um, and then the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a type for lambdas and a lambda is gonna have a name, as we've already kind of said, and then it's gonna have mvars, which is a list of nvar. All right, and everything still works, but now I'm gonna break it because I'm gonna make it so my function, instead of just accepting a name, accepts a lambda. <clears throat> All right, so now it's whining because I'm using name everywhere down here. So I say lambda dot name, should work. Okay, and now it's whining because down here I'm passing text through, but I need to be passing lambda values through. So I'm just gonna say uh, name equals that, and then mvars equal an empty list. Now, it can't resolve the type of an empty list straight up, so we need to actually add um, a type annotation here, which we can just put in line like that. And then let's do the same thing for goodbye. There we go. So we successfully refactored that, although NVARs aren't being used yet. So let's go ahead and let's make NVARs used. So what do we want for NVARs? I'm just gonna new line these out. Um, we basically just want it to look like, I'll just do exactly how we, ha I'll, I'll do exact exactly what we have up above. So UI domain value equals this. Okay, and then I'll do the same value here just for fun. Um, and something I'm gonna do is I'm going to escape the dollar sign just so that it comes out exactly like we had it before. Hmm, and it looks like my escape isn't actually going through. Maybe you need to do double dollar sign. Unbound variable, no, hmm. Interesting, I don't actually know how to get that dollar sign through. Well, anyways, that's not a huge deal. That's something I can figure out later. 
All right, so what do I want to do next? Well, I actually want to make it so those environment variables um, populate this section here. So for this, I'm actually going to use a couple of functions that are built into DAL. And this is kind of another sweet feature of DAL is that you can just do imports by basically referencing the URL directly in code. So let's see. I want to find DAL prelude. Okay, the repository is moved here. And basically what I can do now is I can just include any function I want from here. So I think what I'm going to want is I'm going to want a way to map values over a list. <clears throat> so I can just open up the raw file. And I think in practice you would want this to uh, be maybe not, um, oh, what am I trying to say? I think in practice you would probably want to link to a specific hash in the GitHub repo, but I'm just going to link to whatever's currently in the prelude. So let map equal that. Okay, so I imported map just by pointing to the URL. Pretty slick. And then I think from text, I want concat sap. which is basically like join in other programming languages where you take a separator and you take a list of text values and you uh, join them together. So now what I want to do is I want to, from the mvars, generate this list of mvars. So why don't we say let tf mvar equal a new function which takes an mvar and goes to text of some kind, which our text is actually just gonna look like this. Um, it's gonna be, I'll, I'll indent it correctly here. It's probably not the greatest way to do it. Um, another thing I want to say up front is, I know that there's a library out there to do some of this stuff, but I kinda of wanted to try it myself. <clears throat> so key is going to be whatever the key is. And it's just gonna say equals, mvar dot value. Okay. So now what we can do is we can do a couple of things. Basically, we want to interpolate some stuff here. We want to do a concat sep. We want to separate with new line. And basically, what we want to do next is we want to map over our mvars. And the function we want to call is tf mvar. And with map, like the list before that we made those empty, we all have to give some type information because you pass the types through in the functions. Um, they're not implicit like in other languages you might be familiar with. So the input type is going to be an nvar of each value. And then the output type of each value is going to be text. So you're kind of just specifying the type of this function here. Okay, and if we run it, it looks like that worked. So let's go ahead and test it. Maybe we'll make it so... This function has another mvar, and the key is, it's a little sloppy, sorry about that. Maybe if I space it out a little more, that might be too small. Zoom in a little more. Um, key two, and the value of key two is gonna be high. Awesome. So that's pretty sweet, that's pretty robust. Um, and really now, this is just data. Um, I, I'm interpolating it here, but I just happen to be interpolating it. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna say let lambdas equal a new list of one lambda. And then we have another lambda. Nice. And then what we can actually do here is we can do the same trick we did above. So we can say concat sap, new line, map, and what we're actually mapping here is from a lambda to text. And our function is tf lambda. We're doing that over our lambdas. Awesome. <laughs> now we have our output again. Um, that's looking cool. And this is just data now. So earlier in my little conundrum of how do I get the uh, function names for all my functions without having to repeat myself a bunch of times, well... That's pretty much resolved at this point. So I can just say um, output, for example, 
<clears throat> function names. <clears throat> and I can say value equals this. And then what can I do? I can do a good old fashioned concat sep. Concat sep's my pal, clearly. Um, concat sep. Oops, nudging that a little. Map. So what we actually want to do, we just want the function name. So I'll just say tf lambda function name. And what that's going to do is that's going to take in a lambda. And it's just going to output basically uh, AWS lambda function dot lambda dot name dot function name. And that's something I would have to type a whole ton of times, but here I'm only typing it once. So I'm gonna map over my lambdas. <clears throat> I'm gonna map from a lambda to text. Awesome. And here I've got my lambda functions. And I guess I could uh, make that look a little more pretty. <clears throat> so I could do that and I could, um, also space this like I space the thing above. It's back to, and then my actual join can be a comma, new line. Awesome. And quite frankly, that's looking great. That's looking uh, easier in some ways. Um, and now I have some degree of type safety in this generation. I don't know a lot of tools that can do this as well as doll. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.